Welcome to the podcast, Hass Discusses. I am the host, Michael Hassman, and we are here with Slim Gorilla and Almighty Bumpin'. Welcome to the show. This is the first appearance of Almighty Bumpin' on my podcast, and is it also your first appearance on any podcast? Uh, yeah, this is my first, man. I appreciate it going down to history. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to, to talk to you and get to know you more and all that, but I want to talk about um, a new song that was... um or video that was released, song, video, Deal With You, that came out in the, I love the snares in that song. What's more fun, uh, producing or rapping, Almighty? I want to ask you that right now. Man, I think producing is more fun. That was my first love. I was producing first, started rapping, so, yeah, I'm going to go with producing. When was the first of rap songs that you ever, like, released? Like, what, what, what year would you say that was released? Man, my first song released, I want to say back in like 2008 or nine. I used to drop music with Quan Lennon. Your brother. That's back, yeah, we had a group called Legit, Legit Nation, Legit Gang. We still, you know, we still had a collective now. But um, we started, that was back in um, high school, back in like 10th grade. Mm, that's, that's cool. And he's in Passion Plays now, obviously. Yeah. And um, what's your favorite song that you've made with Quan Lennon? Man, as of now, I want to say that Signs, and that's off my uh, my latest my latest album, Udo Village. Mm. That song. Yeah, too. man, I love that song. Everybody love that song. What about you, Slim? Um, what's what's your favorite song you made with Quan Lennon? Shit, my favorite song I did with Quan Man has got to be. That blue, that blue passion. It's off of my old project I did in like 2014. Groovy tunes, man. Mm, nice, yeah. nice. Um, I want to ask you, Slim. What's the best part about working with Almighty? Because you, you and his um music, that you, you and him's collaborations are just they're historic, man. Man, shit, working with Almighty, man. It's always it's always a beautiful thing, man. Every time, bro, we just click we click on everything, bro. Like we're like the, we're like the same person, bro. Like you know, our chemistry is like beyond music, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, ever since uh, Meet Your Maker, man, when we did the, you know, the remake for that, and like, he made that beat. He made that beat by scratch. You know, we both had a liking to Tommy Wright, both had the same chemistry about it. You know what I'm saying? We was like, man, why not remake that? And ever since then, man, you know, shit's just been, shit's been love, man. It's my brother, bro, for real. So, uh, you or Almighty? Have you ever th- thought of doing another like um, like another Tommy Wright song remake? Uh, no, not really, man. I love Tommy Wright. I done met Tommy Wright a couple of times. We did a show with him in Chicago, but when it comes and then like in the funk genre, a lot of people are sampling Memphis artists. But after your views surpass those millions. Those Memphis artists are gonna sue you at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, try, I, I try my best not to sample nobody. Majority of my beats I make from scratch. I don't sample. I don't really sample when it comes to phone. I, I don't really like to sample any like rap artists. How much of deal with you was from scratch? Everything. So all the cowbell and all that, like ooh. yeah, the cowbell, the horns, all the drum, everything's from scratch. Yeah, I was a big fan of that beat. That was big. Big fan of that beat. Now, Slim Gorilla, you, you go, uh, when your project was Soul Day, I, I was probably one of the most melodic you've gotten in your discography. I mean, I could be wrong. Or could, you could have put out more melodic work. But but yeah. I enjoyed how uh, how groovy you got on that. What's your um inspiration when it comes to, um like, melodically or singer-wise, uh, would man, you say? Man, that's crazy you say that because uh, I, I was just talking to uh, – I was just talking to, to Soze about this shit, like that he brought a different side out of me with that album, you know what I'm saying? Working with him, working with his like producer drag, shout out to drag too on that on that project, man. Um man, what really inspired me to 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 really say like that, you know, like people like like Pimp C, you know what I mean, Wiz Khalifa, you yeah. know, like like his older work, you know what I mean, just you know, I come, I came up with them hooks like on the spot. Like a lot of the hooks that you heard on that album, bro, I thought of like on the spot. Like that got wants, got needs. I might even say she in the same room with me when uh when 
we, we had that beat on, they put that beat on and I just went up there, I just went up to the mic, bro. It was like a room full of smoke, bro. And, and did that shit. Rip the three, that, 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 that was like, I love that one too, the Rep the three song. That was my the favorite. Rep, I, Right there, yeah, Rep the bro. Three was on the spot too, man. Like I, I don't know, man. When it comes to hooks, man, that's like my specialty right there, bro. Yeah. This is Forte. Yeah, Forty Five. That's on me. Yeah, I can, I, I can put out a hook, man, and yeah. have have people writing off of it quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, who majority produced that album? Uh, was it like mainly drag, or was there like any other producers on it? I think it was. I think I want to say it was like mainly drag and uh. Like, yes, yeah, and uh, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name. Is it? Is it Ty Ty Ty, Ty White or something like that? I, I Tyrus Rock White. Yeah, Tyrus, yeah, yeah, I see the name. Yeah, him. Shout out to Tyrus White. Mm-hmm. Genshin got one on there. Yeah, I think it was mainly drag though, man, for real. And just me and Soze, we just built a, a a crazy Texas chemistry on that shit from like Houston to Dallas, man, like. Merging our styles together, to like that. I can now call that a brother now too, man. Just because he's like, we like family now, bro. Feel me? I really want to see a show. You know, even though I'm in fucking Delaware, I would, I would kill to go see a show with you, you guys. I would, like one day I'll make it out and you know, I'll see. Man, that. hey, I, I need to do a show out there in Delaware, man. I got some homies out there. Shout out to my boy, Dev, Kyle, Dave, Jay, all of them boys, man. You know, saying Nick. My boy Dom, yeah, yeah. We can get away with a show out there. Three hundred two, man, yeah. I, them my boys out there, bro. I call, I call them past play at Delaware. They don't rap. Only one of them rap. My boy Derek rap, bro. He gonna, he gonna be coming real soon, bro. For real, he gonna turn up real soon. But yeah, that we gonna say that for another time. Yeah, like there's a, there's a slightly good scene there. I, um, there's a couple good venues I could like tell you about. Like there's Lituation. They have some good stuff, and there's like straight out of Delaware and Wilmington, but um. Yeah. A lot of the venues, like, you gotta, like, pay to get it on, and it it depends, like, there is, um, it, it really depends, like, the scene here is, it's, it's certainly, you know, Project Pat himself told me, because I interviewed him, and he told me why the East Coast didn't really, um, get that they, popular, what's, what's up? You know Project Pat? That's crazy, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, it was, like, in, in the fall, like, last fall, like, um, it, but, but what he told me off camera is that you know the South when it came to them making music, they um they wanted to help each other and they were way more open to working with each other, especially in the past. Um, mm. Most states would work with each other because people in this this is what he told me. People in the South they're they're about their money, but they also like to make good music with people and they're not biased towards where you're from. But on the wow. East Coast every one of them are just really biased to where you're from because they got the people from New York and they hate every other borough. So it's been like that since, like, the 90s, man. You know, Pips even used to talk about it, bro. Like, motherfuckers used to make fun of us, man. Like, you know, out there in the East Coast, shit like that, back when it was, like, the East Coast and West Coast. West Coast didn't make fun of us, but it was, man, like, you know, New York rap was on top of this shit, yeah. you know? And we was looked at as, like, you know, funny. We talk funny, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they thought we they thought we was stupid, you feel me? Our, our shit sound country and funky and all this shit that they used to say. Now, the whole fucking hip hop so scene, like, like everybody loves this other shit. Everybody want to be, everybody want to have dogs in their mouth. Everybody want to grill in their mouth. Everybody want to yeah. be a pimp and a play and shit. Everybody want to screw their hooks and all of that. Yeah, I don't know shit about this shit. But you know, it's all, it's all love now, you feel me? But yeah, back then, that's what it was, man. Yeah, and I think that's that that has caused um many scenes in the um northeast to suffer due to um a bad a bad like a uh, couple runs of generations of rappers that just really didn't want to try to work with each other and because everyone out here they 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 think they're all like they they they're not really down to work with each other and they they all think it's good to be alone when it's way better to just meet and and find new people to work with like and just right. collaborate like yeah. But Almighty, I want to ask you, how did you first start producing music? Man, uh, I've been producing music since I was like 10 years old, to be real. I met somebody like where I used to live. And like it was like my next door neighbor. And then he was older and I like used to hang out with him. And then he taught me how to make beats and showed me Fruity Loops. It was like Fruity Loops 4 back then. This is back <laughs> like 2000 and three or something, 2002. Ooh. 
Damn. Man. 2003, yeah, it's 2003. That's crazy. Yeah, so, um, you know, I sucked back then, but I just kept on at it and got better. Then I, like, found my sound, what I like the most, you feel me? What was the challenge when getting into it? Uh, you said a challenge? Yeah, what was, like, an early challenge when you got into making music? Uh, I think, I think it was a challenge. So you probably made so many hits, you can't remember this. Yeah, shit. man. It's just, I didn't really look at them like challenges. It was just like, you're trying to get exposure to get people listen to your music. I guess that's a challenge, but it's coming slowly but surely. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. How'd you get into, uh, you You got in a, you're in Radio Clan, right? You're in Radio Clan. <laughs> yeah, I was in Radio Clan. So how did that, how did that come about? All right, before Radio Clan, I, I was I produced a couple of songs for Lil B the bass guy, so no. it's a which yeah. song? Yo, that's crazy. I didn't even look into that. Yeah, so it's a song called uh, "Connected in Jail" by Lil B, and uh, Perp Perp heard that song, and then there was another dude in Radio Clan called Young Renegade. So he introduced you know introduced me to Perp, talked to him. He was like, "Oh yeah, I want him. I love his beats." Then, like, I hooked up with Perp on Twitter, and he was like, all right, you're officially 275. Because before I was officially Radio Clan, I already was making beats for, like, Xavier Wolf and Chris Travis mm-hmm. and shit. So I was, like, already in the loop of it, where everything was going. But um, in 2012 or, like, in 2011, like, I officially, Perp officially made me 275 Radio Clan. Yeah. Yeah. What what was like the best part about being in Raider Clan? Like, who'd you get to meet in Raider Clan that you were proud to meet? Man, I was proud to meet SGP. Man, he's a genius. A lot of people got like different opinions about him, but if you're really around him, like you yeah. see, that's a real why man. he's still talked about to this day. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants in his personal life or whatever he's doing. Yeah, but it's just his music. It like overpowers all that. Yeah, bro. Like when you meet Perk, bro. That is a genuine, solid brother, man. You feel me? Like, and that's why, like, when people talk about Perk or try to bash Perk in front of me, bro, I'm like quick to snap on niggas, man, because, like, he changed a lot of motherfuckers' lives, let alone people in Raider Clan, but, like, fans and shit, bro. Like, he changed he changed a lot in this yeah, game. Yeah, like, he opened doors. He made, it, he made it cool to be dark and, like, you know what I'm saying? Make cool like, to be black. And yeah. Be proud of your blackness and stuff. You feel me? And he was like, like he was proud of us making passion plays. You know what I mean? And it just yeah. to this day, we still, I still live by this shit. This Raider Clan shit, this shit didn't, bro, I didn't leave that shit. He didn't leave that shit. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, it, it said that it had to end up how it ended up, but you know, we still here and we repping this, this passion play shit, this Raider Clan shit, so. Yeah, shout out to Perk, man. Look, yeah, shout out to Perk. I am. I. I'm just gonna say this right now. I'm. A, I'm a. I'm. A, I'm. I'm. I'm fucking obsessed with Space Ghost Perk. Like I'm. I'm really. I'm. He's a genius. Like I. I play his music every day. I'm not gonna lie. And all the people that he's been around and came up around. Like I. I play them too. And when when I like produce, I often just think of like. How would he would do shit, and I want to meet him one day and make music with him. That shit would be a privilege. It, it, it real with you, bro. If it wasn't for Perp or a Clan or anything, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be next to this man. I wouldn't be in Nashville right now if it wasn't for Clan. Clan changed my life, bro. I don't know what I'd be doing, bro. Like, yeah, I was freestyling back then and shit, and having fun with the music and record shit. But Greater Clan. Gave yeah. me that push. It, it like, like Radio Clan opened the door for us that we never thought was there. Yeah, it inspired me, bro. Yeah, like yeah. it showed us that like you don't have to just be big in your city to yeah. like you know what I'm talking about live your dreams out here. Yeah, yeah. The whole world, you know what I'm talking about, you can go anywhere. And you're in Nashville, and Almighty, um, you grew up in Nashville. Is that correct? Yeah, I, yeah, I grew up in Nashville. What could you say about the scene there? Like, um, who who is big in Nashville growing up that uh, you listened to or collaborated with in your early days? Um, it, well, you know, yeah, Young Buck was real big, so like he had a big influence at the time, you know, with G Unit and stuff. And then um, Starlito, he had a real big influence too. And then before him, he had Pistol. 
he was signed to um, Easy E Ruthless Records in the nineties. He had a real big. Um, I was born in ninety three, so I got I got to see like all the different you know cultures I could that I can remember. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm gonna look at in him. Pistol is his name. Yeah, Pistol. He bumping too. Yeah. Mighty just showed me that shit yesterday. Too. Yeah, he was signed to Easy E. I didn't know Easy E had it. So so Easy E he would like he signed people to like Ruthless and shit. Yeah, yeah. Bone Thugs. He had Bone yeah, Thugs. He signed Bone Thugs. Then he had he had some more. Then he had Pistol. Easy was smart, man. He yeah. was he was the one in the he was going to the south, bro. I mean, he, he sold fine. coke, so you know, I mean, like yeah, I don't know. Like, he was in Nashville too. Like, like I, I, he, he, he probably would have been like a, I don't know who to, who to compare him to, but he probably would have been like a Jay Z type of big business music guy. I think Easy E would have been a a big businessman, bro. When it came to life, I'm an artist, bro. Cause like, bro, he when was charismatic. Cause too. he probably did movies. Exactly. Cause with an artist like that that you show me from Nashville, that means you had to dig deep. Like you had yeah, to be in the yep. city. Yeah. Feel me? Couldn't Google him. You know, like yeah. you really had to Yeah, that's true. Damn. But um I have a deep question. I have a deep, deep question. If I don't know if you guys are I don't know how old you guys are, I don't know if you guys are parents already, but you say like years from now, your child wants to hear your music. Which song would you show them? Damn, that is deep. Uh, yeah, I already got a son. He loves my music. He's seven. Okay, all right. What what song? What song? What was the first song you showed uh, him? I guess Gold Passion. Mm. That's a that's a that's a classic. Almighty, I think when it came out twenty fifteen. Yeah, that's when I it was, we were still in like Ryder Clan and stuff. What about you, Slim? What would you show your future son? Shit, yeah, I think I would show him. Uh... <laughs> I was showing passion at them, man, just because, you know, how far that song came and then, like, the video of that song, bro, like, it just shows, you know, it shows it shows growth and it also shows, like, everything is not what it seems, man. You know what I'm saying? And, like, there's a lot of behind the scenes behind, behind that video, man, you feel me? But, um, yeah, that's what I would show my, my son. Like, you know, like, follow your dreams, man. Don't give up in the shit and always keep a, a positive or around your people. Yeah. You know, in, yeah. in what you want in life, man. Yeah. I actually sampled my son on one of my songs. A song yeah. called Bring It On. It's my son's voice if you listen to it. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, The looking, if you're looking for me, though, Slim, I want to know, like, you, you released the music video of that is that like a newer video for an old song or is that like an old video for an old song that was dropped nah what i told almighty man and uh it's funny because almighty was like man you should just keep songs classes and shit i was like man i want to go back and do videos for them because bro i I don't know i listen to my my albums a lot bro like i'm just like damn i can't believe i made this shit but yeah i I, uh and shout out my boy chief man we uh it was snowing it was snowing that day that night and i took Man, I want to shoot. I want to shoot if you're looking for me in the snow. I always said this, bro. Because you got to think about it. I, I made Iceberg Pimpin' in like, what, 2015, 16? I mean, and I'm the li- cover, you know? like Yeah, yeah. I'm living in Houston, so I had never seen snow. But now I live in Nashville, and I you know I got my cameraman there. I, was, I hit him up on the spot. I was like, bro, it's snowing. He's like, bam, I'm on my way. So I went about like shooting. And it's exactly how I visioned it when I made the song, bro. It just sounds very, like, like Arctic, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite songs too, man. Another song that came out around the time was um the Deadpool song. Uh, which film is better in your opinion, the first or second? I'll take both opinions from you guys on this. Deadpool, man. I, you know the first one. You know, first one's always gonna come first. Man. So, I ain't never seen it. You never seen Deadpool? It's funny, man. I mean, when it comes to Marvel, bro, I'll probably watch it later. Yeah, I prefer Black Panther. I even got the shit tatted on me, but. You got Black yeah. Panther tatted on you? Yeah, yeah. That's I got cool. it on. I'm excited for them to bring a Blade back. Bro, oh, yeah. I seen that shit. They're going to make a... Yeah, yeah. I saw that. They're going to get Mahershala Ali to do it. Oh, you, they did? You know who that is? The, the, um, he was in um, Green Book. And he was in Moonlight. And... Oh. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. The the uh the dude that played the older version of the kid in Moonlight, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. That's just that's just gonna be good. Yeah, that's that's gonna be tight. What what what, what like new Marvel movies you've been fucking with or Star Wars shit? Like, well, really, man. When it comes to Marvel, bro, I'm really I like I love Black Panther, bro. I, you know, I don't really get too hype about like any other super. I mean, I saw that new Spider Man movie, but really, man, I think they should come out with the fucking uh, Kill Marvel movie, bro. And they should have Michael B. Jordan playing that shit. They need yeah. to think about Kill Marvel, bro, because he just it would be hard. Yeah, he has a whole story. Like he has a he he was the original king, bro, but. They might, they might, they might do it for real. Yeah, they could just like re, um, they could like um have it. You know the Daniel, you know the guy from Get Out and Black Panther. Yeah. Maybe yep. what, what if they have him um revive his dead body or something, and then make him become Black Panther? Kill him. No, no, no. They don't even have to do that, bro. All they would need to do is start from the beginning of Killmonger, bro. On what? On why he became Killmonger in the first place. Then okay, boom. yeah, like a Joker type of thing, or how he became then, a villain. And we seen the Joker, and we saw how he came up, you know what I'm saying? And, like, why he became the Joker. Do the same thing for Killmonger. Yeah, get somebody yeah, yeah. get somebody to play Killmonger as a kid coming up in, like, his middle age, and then when he's grown, he's he's fucking Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There you have it. Rest is history in there. And then it shows, it builds up to Black Panther, how he became his like you know that's a really good idea low-key shit they should do that shit man you should be writing movies man. but um we gonna come so oh movie. yeah bro we, right. yeah we're yeah we're gonna start filming movies bro we, we, we're on that shit soon bro trust me you're gonna see it and i'm gonna start using your music in my movies man because like dude your music is just I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna start like drawing up contracts like we're gonna be getting that you know any you know you know <laughs> But I want to ask both of you, um, Almighty First, what do you do when you have writer's block? Man, I just listen to different music. I just find something. I listen to like a whole bunch of different genres. Like Slim can tell you, I listen to almost everything under the sun. So it's like I could listen to something that has nothing to do with rap, and it can it can inspire me to make something. You feel me? That's good. That's good. Like what 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 genres are Music from other countries, would you say you're infatuated with? Um, I like I like African music, like the South African. You know, it's called I'm a piano. I like that type of music. That's cool. That's cool. And what about you, son? What do you What do you do when you got writer's block? When I got writer's block, man, I watch movies, TV shows, documentaries, and shit while I'm rapping, bro. Like I have it in the background and shit, like. You know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, I'll listen to like shit that inspired me. Or I'll go listen to my old shit. I'll go listen to my old shit and yeah, inspire yeah, myself, yeah, bro. The and then I'm like, damn, man. Mm-hmm. I just That's need to, I just need to take bits and pieces from certain shit that I did and make some new shit, bro. Yeah, I, like, I don't really get writer's block, man. I'm always talking shit. I'm going to talk <laughs> shit. I'm going to talk my shit, bro. Any, any way, any form, bro, I'm going to do it. If it's monotone, or if I'm yelling on that hoe, like, I'm going to do me. You know what I mean? I want to see you do more, more freestyles over, like, popular beats. Like, one time you did a freestyle over a NBA Youngboy beat, and I thought that was cool. Yeah, see, I, I just, I didn't finish it, though. I just wanted to do the hook part <laughs> and put it on there. And people yeah. were like, man, you freestyle. But I might be on some Wayne shit and do, like, a little, like, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, Houston, like, you know, you, are you familiar with Swisher House and shit like that? You know, DJ Screw, you know how everybody freestyled on shit? I think I'm going to bring that shit back, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. like the 30-minute, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, start rapping on, like, just beats that I fuck with. You know what, what I'm saying? Bullshit. Yeah, bro, I think I'm going to do that shit. Just have fun. Because music shit fun to me, bro. At the same time, you know, I take it seriously, but this shit is fun to me. I love this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Almighty, Um, what plugins or synthesizers are you a... Uh... Frequently using when making beats, uh, Nexus and uh, Purity. Yeah. That's all I really use. I need. I need anybody listening, man. Send me VSTs, plugins, drum kits. Send me all that shit. 
DJ, D, I don't know if you already have this drum kit, but DJ Sacred has a really good drum kit that I use a lot when my production. Um, I might have to send you that. Yeah, send me that, man. I use a lot of Glitch Room drum kits too. It's got it's got like pretty much over a thousand uh, funk samples, and it's oh, it's cool. really good. It's really good. I'm now we're gonna be, I should play a drum kit solo too. I'll buy that shit. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to put it together. Sounds good. Now, what music uh, can we expect from the both of you in the coming future? Mm. Man, I got uh, I got RNG. It's going to be coming out. That's me and Genshin's tape. It's like, you know, some some old school. Well, not necessarily old school. It's in between old school and new school. But it's like Houston, Houston trill R&B raps, man. And the reason why we call them the RNG is because you know, most of the beats are like R and B based beats, but it's got that trill ass, it's got that trill ass like love rap shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. it'll be hard, you wanna kill each other and make all this fucking stepping shit, man. But man, you got some you got some music, man. You know, motherfuckers wanna roll out with their girls, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like some relate to it. In different roles at different yeah, times. yeah. So I'm, I'm coming through with some like with some R and B type shit. But I mean, I might not be singing on it, or maybe I'd be singing. You don't know. I but, must be singing on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. but shit, yeah, bro. That, that's why that's why we call it R and G. And R and G stands for really against you because it's just me and him. Nice, nice. Now what about you, Almighty? Man, uh, we got a we got a me and Slim got a cold ass single coming. Yeah, oh man, dog. That's not even just a single, bro. We got a whole project. Yeah, we got a project. We got a project coming. A collaboration project called Bout Time. That shit's gonna go. Then yeah. we're gonna be dropped probably in the next couple of weeks. We're gonna be dropping a single off of that project. More cowbells, boy. Yeah, more cowbell. Gotta have more cowbell. Yeah, that's what they want. The, um, the, uh, I sampled the, uh, Christopher Walken, uh, more cowbell, the Saturday Night Lives, uh, Sketch. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's funny. That's funny. The, the Don't Fear the Reaper sketch. I did that. Yeah. Like, that shit. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I think we got to learn like a little bit more about Patch Plays, a little bit more about Almighty, and links in the description to check out your music. And uh, thanks for coming on, fellas. Shut up. Peace out.